Welcome to this course on digital signal processing being taught by me, this is my name, Datta Roy and I am an emeritus professor here. This is the first lecture, in the first lecture we are going to introduce digital signal processing in general and the course in particular. The course contents um, is it readable on the screen? It is okay. I shall read it out. The course contents it is given in the sheet that I have circulated. This is the span of the course. We shall do, let me tell you, I do not pre assume any knowledge of DSP from you. All I pre-assume is that you are acquainted with signals and systems. However, at least one third of the course shall be devoted to a review of signals and systems because it is extremely important that you understand what are discrete time signals and what are discrete time systems. And what happens when discrete time signals interact with discrete time systems. <coughs> so, the first few topics are review of signals and systems, discrete time signals and systems in the time domain. We shall discuss typical signals, we shall go into the sampling process, then we shall characterize discrete time systems. <coughs> then we shall introduce the special class of linear time invariant systems which I abbreviate as LTI, classification of LTI discrete time systems. Then we shall go into discrete time signals description or characterization in the frequency domain through the transforms various kinds of transforms, we shall introduce the discrete time Fourier transform, then discrete Fourier transform DFT. We shall talk about computation of DFT, in other words we shall go, go into the basics of FFT. We shall talk about linear convolution using DFT and also circular convolution using DFT and we shall introduce some new techniques which are not available in the book. We will talk about Z transforms in details, linear time invariant discrete time systems, system description in the frequency domain. In other words, we shall talk about transfer function, frequency response, then we shall introduce simple digital filters, all pass functions complementary transfer functions and then digital two pairs. We shall go back to sampling and reconstruction, a small discussion on that. Then we will go into digital filter structures, direct, parallel, cascade, ladder and lattice for IIR, infinite impulse response filters and possible realizations for FIR or finite impulse response including <coughs> polyphase, all pass structures and tunable filters. We shall spend a considerable amount of time on digital filter design, infinite impulse response using impulse invariant and bilinear transformations. We shall discuss spectral transformations then FIR design using windowing, frequency sampling and computer aids and then if time permits we shall also have a brief discussion on implementation considerations. This is what we aim to uncover in this course. At IITs we do not cover a course, we uncover at least certain parts of the course. This is the aim and it does not matter how much we can do, but what we do 
must get imprinted in your mind. The books to consult I have adopted SK Mitra, Digital Signal Processing and Computational Approach, McGraw Hill 2000. This is the second edition. Second edition I am told is available. <laughs> if you cannot get it or if you get an old edition at a cheaper price, well that will also do. First edition 1997. There are major changes which were affected by Professor Mitra at the suggestion of a few people including me. This is the textbook. Those who have difficulty with signals and systems, please also buy a copy of Oppenheim, Schaeffer and Nawab, N-A-W-A-B. No, I think it is called simply it is simply Oppenheim and Schaeffer. This is discrete time signal processing. Again, if you buy, you buy the second edition. But if you get an old edition at a cheaper price, that will also do. Uh, this, is, this is a Prentice Hall publication, 2000. <coughs> this is about what we wish to do in the course. Now, the, since the topic is digital signal processing, we shall explain the meaning of the individual terms and then what the combination means. First, we concentrate on what is a signal. These are formal definitions and you must understand this very clearly. A signal in mathematical terms is a function. A function is a dependent variable of some variables which are independent variables. A function is a dependent variable of some independent variables. The number of independent variables can be one or more. And in general, a signal is a function f of several variables. These variables are x1, x2, x3 and so on and so forth. These variables could, for example, be time, distance, temperature or any other variable. In this course, we shall mostly be concerned with a function of a single variable and that variable will be time. But because we are talking of digital signal processing, time shall also lose its significance. Our functions will be functions of numbers and numbers are also restricted to be integers. In other words, in DSP, the type of signal that we shall be concerned with will be functions of a variable small n, where small n can take only integer values, positive or negative. That is small n can be minus 15, can be 0, can be plus 13 or plus 14, nothing like 13.5 is permitted because time is discretized. If we plot this function or the signal in general versus the variable, naturally if it is a one dimensional signal, that is if the function is a function of only one variable, a two dimensional picture suffices, a graph paper suffices to plot f of x versus x, the ordinary sinusoidal waveform that you draw on paper f of t versus t is a one dimensional signal and this is called the waveform. But the waveform in general can be multidimensional depending on the number of independent variables. For example, a picture which is said to be worth 
more than 1,000 words, a picture has two dimensions, right? A picture should ideally be three-dimensional, okay? Three-dimensional, it means all the three space variables and then what is the dependent variable? Dependent variable can be brightness, can be color, can be density, can be any other thing. So, signals can be one dimensional, two dimensional or multi dimensional. In this course, we shall be concerned only with one dimensional signals that is f of n. Signals can be natural, for example, a thunderstorm or a lightning is a natural signal, it is a natural phenomenon or it can be synthetic, signal can be generated in the laboratory for communication purposes. Signals can be either analog or discrete and it is discrete signals that we are concerned with in this course. One common confusion is that all continuous signals are also called analog signals. All continuous time signals are analog signals, but all analog signals are not continuous time, all right. If the time is discretized, but not the amplitude, if the time, if the independent variable is discretized, but not the dependent variable, it is still an analog signal. And therefore, an analog signal can be either continuous time or discrete time. Discrete time signals are also analog signals. If a discrete time signal is quantized, that is, if in a discrete time signal where the independent variable has been discretized, if the amplitude is also discretized, that is the amplitude is allowed to take on only certain values, then it is said to be discretized or quantized. So, if it passes through a discrete time signal, if it passes through an A to D converter, analog to digital converter, then depending on the number of bits, for example, if it is a 3 bit A to D, then 8 possible amplitudes are possible, okay. So, after A to D, usually the signal after discretization in amplitude is also coded in some form and the most usual form is the binary form. So, the signal after being discretized is converted to a binary number and that is what we get as a digital signal. So, I have explained what is signal and what is a digital signal. Do not make this mistake that analog and continuous time signals are one and the same. As I have said and I repeat now that all continuous time signals are analog signals, but all analog signals are not continuous time. Analog signals can be continuous time and also discrete time. If the discretization is limited to the independent variable or the x, x axis only, the signal still remains analog. It is only when both independent variable and dependent variable are discretized that we get a digital signal, okay. So, a discrete time signal is analog, a digital signal is one in which the amplitude is also discretized. Why signals? 
why should we study signals at all? Because signals carry information and it is information that drives the whole world. Information, transmission, reception, absorption, action on the basis of information. Information is the basic thread of life and therefore we are interested in signals. Why processing? What is the need for processing? Processing is done to obtain the signal, the given signal in a more desirable form. For example, there are a number of signals which are to be transmitted over the same channel then we do a processing called multiplexing. At the receiver end, the signals have to be separated and therefore there is a need for demultiplexing. The signal invariably is corrupted by noise. Therefore, our processing may aim at filtering the noise out, noise filtering. I shall illustrate this with the help of a specific case, the electrocardiogram waveform. Electrocardiogram waveform usually looks like this. <coughs> this is a typical ECG trace and <coughs> the doctors are interested if you take one cycle and blow it up, it will look like this. Doctors are interested where these peaks and dips occur, P, Q, R, S, T. This is the standard language used by doctors. Now, if this signal is corrupted, this is a very clean trace that you see here. If this signal is corrupted and the corruption comes from various sources, for example, the ECG waveform is usually corrupted with 50 hertz power line pickup. The, the uh, ever present power 230 volt 50 hertz induces in any nearby equipment, all right. It can be a pickup, magnetic pickup or it can be a, an electric electrostatic pickup. It can be due to a capacitive mutual capacitance or mutual inductance. This is ever present. You may like to get rid of the 50 hertz <coughs> before you look at the signal and this is done by a notch filter or a band elimination filter which we shall study in this course. There are also electromyographic signals due to the muscles. You know the human body is a wonderful electrical machine. You put two electrodes at any two places in the body, it will record an electric potential. The muscles themselves generate electrical signals and they might corrupt. Hence the need for processing to get a clean picture. <coughs> Signal processing basically can be done in three ways. One is analog, that is <coughs> do not convert the signal into digital, process it in the analog form itself, analog or digital or mixed, partly analog and partly digital. One might ask here, what is wrong? with totally analog processing. <coughs> well, the answer to that is given by the proverb, two arrows in a quiver is always better than one because if one fails, you can, you can use the other arrow to hit the enemy. <coughs> but then why three? Why three? Because digital signal processing is so much more convenient and so much more accurate than analog. On the other hand, most of the, most of the natural signals that we generate in the laboratory use for modulation, transmission are analog and therefore you have to use mixed processing. Analog signal processing dominated the scene prior to 1970s. 
But after 1970, because of the easy availability of digital hardware in the form of integrated circuit chips at a very low cost, digital signal processing got boosted up and the current practice is mixed signal processing dominated by digital signal processing. In other words, at any point of signal processing, if you find that DSP can be used, one goes ahead. There is no, <coughs> no other choice. Analog signal processing <coughs> advanced with quantum jumps with the inventions in devices and circuits. We started with Acharya J. C. Bose's time, coherer and spark gaps. Spark gaps were used to generate signals and coherer that is a galena crystal used to detect. It is a unipolar device, it is the crude form of what we now know as a diode. That was what we started with and Marconi's patent as you know also is with, a, with spark gaps to generate signals or telegraph signals which are also kind of spark gaps on off control and he used a, a improved form of coherer to detect signals. Then came in the picture vacuum tubes, triode in particular which could amplify a weak signal. Then came in the picture 1947, the transistors. Transistors made things smaller, made life more enjoyable and <coughs> more designable with smaller power supplies, a 5 volt, 12 volt power supply does the job. And then further reduction in size was possible due to the introduction of operational amplifiers and other integrated circuits, analog as well as digital. And then there occurred this revolution of small scale integrated circuits, medium scale integrated circuits, large scale integrated circuits, then now VLSI and there are super scale SSSI integrated circuits and so on and so forth. It is only limited by one's imagi imagination how much you can go. <coughs> Even today advances in analog signal processing are going in full swing because most signals of interest are analog. The real life signals, the speech, the telephone uh, conversation, music, the change of weather it is never abrupt, it is always gradual. The change in the economic status of a country, it is gradual. So, it is an analog signal because most signals of interest are analog and the ultimate desired output in most cases is also analog. You can process speech, but digital telephony has come in. You can process speech digitally, transmit digitally, but ultimately you cannot hear ones and zeros. You have to convert into an analog signal and therefore analog signal processing is also advancing. There is a lot of research going on and uh, mixed signal processing is the trend of the day. The time is 12.54 and we would stop here. Thank you.